Today I'll be providing a tabletop comparison between two 1851 Navy revolvers, one made by Pieta and one made by Uberti. I'm Dustin and you're watching Guns of the West. If any of you revolver enthusiasts are looking to purchase an 1851 Navy, I really hope that this video will help you make your purchasing decision. So let's jump right in and look at the differences between Pieta and Uberti regarding the 1851 Navy Colt revolver. Now, first thing I want to point out, just to get it out of the way, in this case, you'll notice the 1851 Navy has a brass trigger guard and brass backstrap. The Uberti has blued steel for both, and I just want to make it clear, that is not a difference between Pieta and Uberti. Uberti does offer this gun with brass as well. This is just the London model as it happens, and the London has blued steel. Other than that, the guns are the same, and so this is still a very fair comparison. All right, I want to start out with fit and finish. One problem I've had with uh, Pietas, and it's not too big of a deal, but where the wood meets the metal usually tends to not quite match up. I can always feel a ridge there where the wood sticks up a little higher than that brass. Uh, sometimes I get very sharp edges, especially like right here on the frame. That can be almost knife sharp, it seems, because it just isn't finished off quite as well as the Uberti. Here on the Uberti revolver, edges are much smoother where wood meets metal. The edges of the metal are not round, but not quite so sharp as the Pieta version. So I would say overall, fit and finish, that's going to be a win for the Uberti. Next thing that I want to look at is historical accuracy. And there are a couple things to look at, actually three main ones that I want to point out regarding the historical accuracy of these guns. The first is just where these Italian manufacturers put their markings. On Pieta, this is one of my two biggest beefs against Pieta, and nothing against Pieta. The gun shoots great. You get a quality gun with them, that's for sure. But the markings they put on it, right here they've got their Pieta made in Italy right there visible on the side of the barrel, which of course you're not going to see on a Colt revolver. Now at least I got lucky. I don't know why mine is there. Usually I see it up right here exactly on the side. At least mine is one level down, so that's a little better. And on the other side, of course, we have black powder only, 36 caliber. Now, I realize, someone will say in the comments, but I realize that has to be there for liability. I just think there are places you could put it that would be much more discreet. For example, on the Uberti revolver, you're going to see the sides and the top are just clean. There's nothing there to make it look any different from a Colt, really. And if you want to see the markings, you just pull down the loading lever, upside down from this angle, but there it is. It says 36 caliber, black powder only, A. Uberti, Italy. So they're able to still accomplish the liability goal while still maintaining a much more historical look. And since we're looking at markings, you'll see on the top, this one is marked London, because again, that is the London version. Other markings, the markings that are historically correct, uh, like the Battle of Campeche naval scene engraved on both cylinders, and the quality of the engraving, honestly, I think is about the same between the two, at least in these examples. Uh, next thing that I want to talk about as far as the uh, historical accuracy, besides markings, is the plunger right here that pushes the ball or bullet down into the chamber. And this is going to be another clear win for Uberti. And the reason I say that is because, we won't take the guns apart, but on the end of that plunger where it actually pushes onto the bullet, it's carved deep enough to accept a conical bullet, just like the original Colts were. On this, this is clearly made for a round ball. That is just a blunt end on there, and it's perfect for round balls, but if you try to load a historical Colt bullet or any other conical bullet, it's just going to smash up the nose and blunt it. Now, in this a particular example, to be honest, I did replace that. So mine does have a deep cut for conical bullets, but only because I bought a plunger from Uberti, from Taylors & Company. So again, big win for Uberti on historical accuracy for the plunger. 
Now, the third thing that I want to cover for historical accuracy is the bore. So let's take a look down the bore of each gun. On the left, you're going to see the Pieta bore, and on the right is the Uberti, now that we've got the barrels off. And you'll notice, I would say the quality of the rifling and the bore in general is about the same, and they both shoot fantastic. But notice that the Pieta has a clockwise spin of rifling. The Uberti has a counterclockwise spin. So, which one, you might ask, is historically correct? And the answer to that is actually both. Now, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to my good friend Duke Frazier over at the Duke Frazier Productions channel for digging for me into his vast library of cult information to the book 51 Navies by Nathan L. Swayze. And it showed that the earlier navies had a clockwise spin like what you saw here on the Pieta, and the later ones went counterclockwise like the one on Uberti. So I'm going to call that a tie. They're both right. Um, that's a detail that most people probably, honestly, wouldn't even notice and maybe wouldn't have a preference for. But just know, when you shoot Pieta, your bullet spins to the right, and when you shoot Uberti, it spins to the left. Now the next uh, topic is going to be the smoothness of the action. So let's just pick them up. Now I've spent plenty of time with both of these guns, especially this one. This one I haven't had for too long, but I've been spending some time with it. And honestly, the actions feel virtually identical. I can't really tell a difference in which one is smoother than that hammer pole. And they seem to be about the same weight on the spring. And they seem to have about the same weight of trigger to release it. So for the action smoothness, I'm actually going to say they're both great. The final thing that I want to talk about is cost. For a lot of people, when you're choosing a revolver, especially maybe if you're not sure you really want to get into this black powder hobby, maybe you're brand new, and the cost might be a big driving factor for you. So if cost is an issue, if you really are trying to be budget-minded, then I'm going to say Pieta is definitely a clear winner there. They do have the issues that I talked about, the markings, the blunt plunger. Um, other than that, though, it is a quality gun, and it shoots just great. If you've been watching my channel, almost all the Pieta, or excuse me, almost all the Navy videos I've done are with this very gun right here. It shoots very accurately. On the Uberti, that is just going to cost substantially more. So are you budget-minded or are you really going for maybe more of a collector's piece that looks more historically correct? If you're going for the more historically correct, I'm going to say overall it's Uberti because it did beat Pieta on more things. In fact, one other thing I just want to point out as far as uh, historical correctness, actually two, bear with me here. But on the Pieta, you'll notice it has a notch cut right here for a shoulder stock, but the frame is not cut for a shoulder stock, so I'm not sure why this is right here on the grip frame. Now, I did some reading in A History of the Colt Revolver by Haven and Belden and found that there were examples of navies with the frame cut for a shoulder stock, but it was considered unusual. Over here, you'll see that this has just a flat bottom on the grip frame, so I'm going to call that another win. Uh, last thing that I don't want to forget, and I almost did, triggers. You'll notice this trigger is a little thicker and comes almost all the way to the bottom of the trigger guard. This one is a little thinner and leaves more space. Now, in that book that I just mentioned, A History of the Colt Revolver by Haven and Belden, I was able to find photos of originals with examples of both of those triggers. So we'll just call that one a tie. Well, I hope this general overview was helpful for you. Again, especially if you're looking for your first revolver and maybe a navy, which I do recommend as a great first cap and ball revolver. Again, price-wise, this is going to be easier on the wallet. This is a little more. For example, at the time that I bought this gun, and at the time of this recording, this is still pretty accurate, that's about $250 to $260 for Pieta. The Uberti, you're probably going to be looking at about $325 to $350. Um, I do think you're getting a better gun with Uberti and more historically correct, but if you just want budget-friendly and a good shooter, this one will be just fine. Um, me, I'm leaning more and more these days to Uberti. I'm going to say right out, that is my favorite one, but maybe not for you. Anyway, hope this was helpful. Please don't forget to click that like button down below and subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos. And don't forget to look in the description to see where you can find me on social media and where to find great Guns of the West products, such as Guns of the West paper cartridge kits. Thank you so much for watching.